Hey, this is Wayne Cook, and you're listening to the What's Brewing Show Network. You're listening to the What's Brewing Show, part of the What's Brewing Show Network, with your hosts, Jake Merrifield, Bill Shirley, Jamal Artis, and Mike Regalado, bringing you anything and everything UCLA sports. And now time for the what's brewing show well hello and welcome back to the what's brewing show i am your host jake merrifield and we have a special interview for you with one of the good friends of the what's brewing show wayne cook of course this is the what's brewing show on the what's brewing show network a bunch of great shows on one great feed uh you can follow us on twitter at what's brewing show or email us what's brewing show at gmail.com you can find us on Substack, what's brewing that's substack.com or subscribe on patreon patreon.com slash what's brewing show or just what's brewing show.com for just two bucks a month you can send the what's brewing show into the future we have some new subscribers to the youtube feed i would like to personally thank brew win 11 and brian m and we also have a new patreon subscriber david rago thank you very much for your guys support of course we're also on youtube as i just said uh, all the shows will go up there with a nice little slideshow. And you can also get What's Brewing Show merch at uh, my locker site. Just check the notes on this podcast feed, and you'll see the address there to get uh, your cool What's Brewing Show swag. You can also call the hotline, 805-399-4WBS, Second Rand Troy. And, um, hey, let's get right to it. We got Wayne. He's going to talk a lot about the current state of UCLA football, and we always appreciate hearing from him, so I won't waste any more of your time. Joining us on the What's Brewing Hotline, once again, we have Wayne Cook. As a quarterback, he led the Bruins to a Rose Bowl, and he's also been the voice of the Bruins on the sideline at games for years and years and years. We love him to death. You know, he also manages to shape young minds in the classroom, so he's he's a great man. It's Wayne Cook. Wayne, how are you doing today? I am absolutely amazing. Um, I'd be a little bit better if we'd have pulled off the victory oh. in the Corvallis, but uh, I have a feeling there's better things ahead. I hope so. I really do. You know, the, the Bruins, you know, make it through the first half of the season. They're four and two. Um, if you would have asked anybody before the season started, uh, you know, how they do in the two games they actually lost at, you know, Salt Lake City at uh, right. Corvallis, uh, nobody would be surprised. But when you actually look at the circumstances of the games, the losses were pretty disappointing. Yeah. So so how are we supposed to feel about this so far, Wayne? Yeah, I'm with you. Um, you know, we Utah is like really good on defense. But but abysmal on offense. They're just they're just not good right now. And so if there was ever an opportunity to win at Rice Eccles Stadium, I thought uh, you know we gave them the seven right away, and then it was yeah. pretty much a seven seven game. And really, there was a few opportunities to score that we let we let get away from us. So mm-hmm. um, it, it's just a bummer. Then you go and you you beat Washington State, who who made what we've learned wasn't quite as good as we thought because they just got whooped by Arizona. But I have a feeling we had something to do with that too, though. They got beat up so much by UCLA that it carried over. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, we go to Corvallis. And again, I agree with you. Before the season started, I would have said those two games were were big ones, and then obviously SC later on, and then the rest of the games we have, we have a really good chance of of, of winning, and I still I still believe that, but it's a bummer because I think we could have got at least one of those two, and 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 now we're kind of at a point because I am never a person that will ever say that like now we're just playing for a bowl bit or whatever. No, no, no. you try to win out, you try to have two conference losses. And you hope, because remember, Oregon, Washington, and USC all have to play, I believe, like four ranked teams the rest of the way. Yeah, it's round round. You know, you mean they are whatever. They have big games ahead of them. So UCLA just got to take care of business now and kind of clean it up because, and, you know, and and the elephant in the room is that the the offense, even though it still ranks fairly high nationally, our passing game has been has been pretty bad, and yeah. uh, and it's and it's also the turnovers have been bad. So everything else, I think, has been really really solid. No, and I I completely agree with you in that you, if they took these losses, I think we would have loved it if they would have split. But it kind of puts pressure on them to you know they can't take another loss if they want to compete for the title. But right. if they do go, if they can not drop another game, then you're just hoping either Washington or Oregon stumbles enough and then you can sneak in there. You know, obviously those are the two yeah. best teams in the conference, but let's try to sneak one in, right? Um, you said on College Sports Now that you thought it might be, uh, there might be an opportunity to, to sit Dante more down for a minute, but 
with Colin Schley, we finally got to see him in game action. He looked awesome, but he's <laughs> dinged up or, or, or outright hurt. And Garbers is rumored to not want to play and give up his retro year now. He's already up yeah. in four games. Who would the Bruins turn to at this point? I mean, they got Justin Martin. They got Chase Griffin. What do you think? <laughs> you, you, are, you are well informed. Yeah. Um, <laughs> There, there's a lot of that going on. So like, so like, here's what's fun. I want everybody listening right now to know that like you, you, you know, when you, when you talk about an 18 year old freshman, and we've talked about it before, like just because he's struggling, you know, welcome to the club of freshmen playing college football. Right. I mean, it's not like this is like anti Dante. Um, I, I know that nowadays, probably more than ever, when you talk about a quarterback, um, you know, I think people automatic. Well, you you don't like? No, I I love him. I love the way he throws. I love his poise. I love his. But right now, he's struggling to see the field. Um, he's he's you know, and and there's a lot of things that quarterbacks do when they're young. Like you might lock in, you might predetermine, you might not use your eyes right, and then you you let doubt creep in. You still there? Rose Bowl. I only I only threw three interceptions when we played in the Rose Bowl. I only threw three interceptions that whole year, and it was one of the things that helped us because the defense got a lot of turnovers, and on offense we did not turn the ball over hardly at all. As a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure going into our Rose Bowl game, we were number one in the nation in that that margin, which is important. Well, we've been forced in turnovers too, right? Our defense has been very opportunistic and very very good, and so we just can't get, keep giving them points. So anyway. Yeah. Going back to what um, I'm talking about with Dante, I still think his future is so bright. Um, I, I really like him. I really, I hope if he ever hears any of these, because I've been saying this all week, and I even said it during the game. Sometimes, and I said it before Colin Slee got in, I, I during the broadcast, I go, sometimes, you know, just watching from the sidelines from a series or, series or two can just kind of calm you down. And then when, when Colin came in and just lit it up, right? Like yeah. the first play, which is where I think he got hurt. He got crushed on the sidelines. I'm like, dude, get out of bounds. But he was so good. And then even the last play before he realized he was hurt, that was a great play too. He just added a spark. And I was sitting there thinking, and I know Dante had a pick six after that, but I'm like, man, Dante actually looked better after that. Because maybe it took a little bit of pressure off of him. Like, like I'm not saying he feels pressure. I'm not trying to put words in his mouth. I don't know what is, what's in his head. But it was almost like it wasn't all on him anymore. And so um, that was a bummer that Colin got hurt. But um, I, I don't know. Uh, just remember this. Like, you know, just because a guy might try to be to save, save his red shirt doesn't mean he won't go. But I'm willing to give it up if I get to play. You see what I'm getting at? Like, oh, I do, yeah. Like, so, so, you know, I'm not saying we will or we won't see Garbers. But I would say he'd be next if he could be convinced. Because mm. the giveaway, right, was when he stopped holding. Yeah. You know, and then we all had to do a little research. To, to, to How many games you get into? I, I didn't wonder, even know because yeah. remember we had that bad hold, yeah. and I went, "Ooh, why isn't Ethan in there?" And then it kind of started to make sense to me. But like, I don't know what's going to happen. And here's what I'll say: if if Dante plays, um, he needs to like you cannot win games turning the ball over like that. Yeah, you know, you just can't. Even if you're on the road at Stanford and you're favored by 17, you can't have two, three turnovers. You can't have pick sixes because as good as our defense is. You're just putting them in a in a terrible situation. So, if he if he does play, and as Coach Kelly said, and I totally agree, he's going to keep learning and learning and learning and learning. He just has to try to figure out a way to. If you're going to miss, you know, don't miss where there's a defender. You know, miss where there's you know where it's out of bounds or yeah. on the ground. Or yeah. you just got to not turn the ball over. Because don't you wouldn't you agree our defense is good enough that without the turnovers. I mean, we're coming down the stretch in that game in Oregon State without the three turnovers, and we'll probably have a lead because oh, we ran yeah. the ball. Gosh, we ran the ball great in the in that game, especially in the second half. I think it's really hard. For, I was going to ask you about the defense in a little bit, but yeah, it's just so hard to play defense in that situation on the road when you right. spot them thirteen points and then you give them seven going into the half. Like they're battling uphill the whole game, so of course they're going to. I think yeah. I think it was inevitable they're going to break a little bit, but I thought they only there was only those two drives in the third quarter, and other than that, they were absolutely stout. You know, I agree. So, I totally thought they were agree. great. Yeah, good enough to win, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, just a couple more with, with Dante and the quarterback situation, Wayne. So, I, you know, I, I hear a little bit, you know, on the, you know, the Twitter and the fans and all that stuff. Uh, there's a little <laughs> bit of second guessing now, and like, oh, they should have just gone with garbage from the beginning. They should have gone with garbage from the beginning. I, to me, that didn't seem very. Uh, it seems a little disingenuous because if you look at the the non con that Moore had. He was absolutely, you know, amazing, especially right. for the fact that he was a freshman. But then, you know, the conference season, it's absolutely, you know, flipped on its head. 
what do you think, obviously, other than just the level of competition, he looked so good early and then not so much the last three games. What is there, like, I know you already kind of got into what quarterbacks see or don't see, but is there anything that, uh, other than just the level of competition, that, that's really getting in his way? No, I, I mean, I, I truly believe that the level of competition was a big part of it. Um, when, when you're playing against um, future NFL guys like we yeah. did in Utah, yeah, everything's faster. Like everything's faster. Every hit you take hurts a little bit more. Every like all this stuff happens. I mean, the the coordinators in the Pac-12. I mean, you figure we we played. You know, uh, Oregon and Utah have two of the best. Yeah, absolutely. They're they're not going to make it clean, right? They're going to make everything. I keep using this phrase muddy because I'm sure some coach used it when I played. But <laughs> you want the picture to be muddy. Like you you don't want the quarterback to drop back and go. Oh, it's man for man on the outside. I can throw a J Mike whenever I want. You want him to think it's man, and then the next thing you know, there's another guy over the top, and it's been, and then you have a flat route, and it really wasn't man, and the corner squats, and the next thing you know, you you threw a pick six. Like you want to confuse as much as possible. That means when you bring a safety or a corner on a blitz, or you do a delayed blitz, or you do little things like that are gonna make him struggle. And then the next thing you know, as a young quarterback, you're looking down and still trying to see where the rush is coming from instead of looking downfield. And there's all kinds of little tricks, right? Like, right. I mean, you, kind of, you, you the, the, as a quarterback, I, I've said this for a million years. All of us have light bulb moments where the game just gets easier. Like all of a sudden you're like, OK, now the game's at a speed where I get it. And Dante has been good his whole life. Right. Ever, ever since he probably picked up a football, he's probably been one of the better quarterbacks. He dominated in high school. We watched him at an all-star game and he dominated in that. And, and he came out and had a lot of success early. Yeah. But then you jump into one of the best conferences in college football right now in the Pac-12 and you go up against two of the best defenses in the conference. And it's it's tough. I mean, it's it's really, really hard. So he'll learn from this. He'll grow from this. It's an awesome experience. Um but like I said, you know, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't, I don't have a crystal ball. Um, if there's a change, he needs to, he needs to like, and this is, a, this is the other thing that in the world of, uh, that we live in, um, it, it's, it's okay to have a setback. Yeah. Like it's okay to have that moment early in your career. I, I'm telling you, Cade McNown did not win. Like he won his last two seasons, his first two seasons. They were like five and five or six and six or whatever. Yeah, Yeah. it was it was a different it was a different world. He threw a lot of interceptions, but we could see it just like we can see it with 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 Dante. We could see that he had arm talent. We could see that he was a competitor. We could see, and then he and he grew. I mean, look at um, Drew Olson. Drew Olson had one of the best senior seasons like in UCLA history, and he kind of struggled before that. Um, I didn't really play my first full season until I was a redshirt junior. Yeah, because I got hurt my sophomore year. So when I was, I mean, I had been in school for four years by the time I got my last two seasons. So I had seen a lot and been around a lot and matured a lot. So like quarterbacks, I mean, in all of them. I mean, you, we could keep going. Dorian Thompson Robinson is the most recent example. Just last year, he was com- completing seventy percent of his passes and looked like he was as good as most of the quarterbacks in the country for a big part of the season. His first couple of years, I don't know if we thought he was going to be that. Yeah. So it's 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 hard. Um, you know, the, the quickest turnaround I remember, I, I always bring up um, Tommy Maddox because his first year he was like five and six and and threw a lot of interceptions. And then that next year we were nine and three and won a won a, a, a Sun Bowl and he was really good and he ended up being a first round draft choice. So like you can it can happen fast if you have that kind of talent, but you have to accept like your weaknesses and and like I don't know if you guys remember, you remember the great Tommy Maddox Marinovich game? Um Maddox, oh, yeah. is, I think it was his freshman year. He had three interceptions in that game, and we still almost won. And I believe he had a pick six in that game too. But Tom was smart, and he was a good athlete, and he was a, he was a really good quarterback. And so he just had to learn from it. He had to learn from it, grow, and get better. And that's that's the great thing about sports, man. As I I know that if Dante keeps playing, it's gonna be. And hey, can I add this too? Because I know we're gonna we're gonna move on, and I know you know that I love to talk, but <laughs> I, I want to add this too. When, when you're a quarterback sometimes and you're young, and I see this in the NFL a lot, and you're thrown into the fray and you just get beat up, some quarterbacks are like Troy Aikman, and they come back and end up winning three Super Bowls right after going one and 15. Yeah. Some guys just disappear, though, because when you leave them in and you let them go through all the 
pains and the struggles and the and all the hits they're going to take and all the you know it sometimes messes with your psyche in a way that you don't quite recover that's why i said during the last game that i thought it might be a good idea for for colin to come in the game because i thought it might give him a chance to just catch his breath and think about what's going on before he got back out there yeah no and i i really wish that they had gone with some sort of uh call and package against utah you know, a little bit earlier, yeah. and then I think that would have made a difference in that game, too. Uh, just one more uh, with more sticking with him, because, you know, we're talking about now at this point, it sucks a, a little bit because, like, the fans are kind of down on him and everybody, you know, it's kind of like it feels like everything's on top of him right now, I'm sure, when he's sitting there trying to prepare for the next game. Um, whether you're you're sitting him or not, it does seem like if you've already played two of the best defenses you're going to play this year, it seems like the two defenses you're going to p- play next don't quite fall into that category. Like, it lightens up quite a bit for him in the next two games, right? So so wouldn't this be a good opportunity right. for him to maybe get something a little bit figured out looking at Stanford and it Colorado? Could, it, it could. I, I just, it, it, and again, I don't know what's going to happen. So like the idea is that, you know, Washington state's defense wasn't, you know, supposed to be as good as the other two and it was yeah. still not spectacular. Yeah, yeah. So, so remember they're all packed, they're all packed full of teams and they all have talent. So like, you know, to me, the, you know, the answer to your question is yes, but if they do decide something else, you know, you're, you're, you still got so much to play for. Yes. You've got a, you've got a really elite defense. You've got a chance. If you look at our schedule that like you, you really, you know, have a chance to be favored in just about every game, you know, SC, maybe not, but it, I have a feeling they're going to lose again uh, before they play us. Mm-hmm. Um, so like the idea is, is that, you know, you've got a chance to run the table and, um, if that's with Dante and he, and he gets better, as you pointed out, that's great. But if, if, if let's just say you give Garbers a shot or even Chase Griffin, who knows, you know, or, 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 you know, Justin Martin, you know, who knows where you go, but if it's, if it's, if it's, if it's Garbers because Collins hurt and he comes in and plays it really, really well. I mean, he's an experienced quarterback. He's been around. We've seen what he did uh, in the bowl game. We saw what he did against Utah, even though it was a loss, it was still a much better offensive performance than what we just had. Yeah. So, so like, you know, and he didn't really get that much of an opportunity. No, so, I agree. Yeah. You know, we don't really know what, because I, I've always said this about quarterbacks too. And I, I love that coach. And by the way, I am not questioning coach Kelly at all. That is not ever going to be my place. I, I think he's a great coach. I really like him and, uh, and I respect him too. Yeah. And one of the things that, um, and he, he's, he's, he's as loyal as they come. Right. Um, he wants these guys all to succeed and he, and he really wants to be as fair as he can, but it's, it's, it's just sometimes with quarterbacks and this is what he see was said in practice. He goes, we know what they're capable of. Like we see it every day in practice. And I, and I, I totally agree with that. You, you see what everybody can do, right. like, you know what they're capable of. The problem is, is when they get in a game, some players just don't like, they just don't live up to that capability, right? They they just kind of shrink under the lights. Yeah, they either elevate or they and, don't. Yeah, yeah. And, and and I really I really don't think that that with Dante I'm talking about that because I think with Dante it's just uh, part of him being a young quarterback. And, and remember, we have to acknowledge that the line hasn't been perfect, the receivers haven't been perfect. Like there's been some mistakes. Like we don't know what would have happened if 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 Norwood would have caught Catch the touchdown that against ball, Utah, yeah. that might've changed the whole complexion of the game. Absolutely. So, so, so we, we don't know. So um, I, I still, whatever happens, I'm rooting for all these guys there. There's a great quarterback room. I, I, they're all high character guys. So whoever plays, I have a feeling the other guys will all be rooting for them. And, uh, and, and I, I do think that down the road, we're going to have a real good one. And Dante, he's just got to learn from this. He's got to be that quarterback that goes through the hard times when he's young. And comes out the other end way better, and I think that's what's going to happen. Yeah, and I think you said it right there: is that this quarterback room does seem to be filled with a lot of high character, high quality guys that that, that got some mm-hmm. skills. So hopefully they'll be able to figure out some solution for you know for the team's sake, you know, going forward. Um, right. Looking at this defense, though, Wayne, you know, you'd call them elite. Um, I I think I agree with you, and it's something I don't think any of us expected coming <laughs> into the season. But what what do you think makes them an elite defense here in the Pac-12 and by you know and, and by extension the the country? Well, I will say this. I've watched this defensive unit get better the last couple of years. Oh, yeah, me too. We, we, for, we forget that under McGovern, they were playing really, really well until Coach you know, went out sick. Yes. yes. 
and it got worse after that. Now we bring in a young coach who I think is going to be a you know a star in this business, and Dan, Dan Lin, who's doing such a great job. He's so poised on the sidelines. By the way, I love the fact that there's a coordinator that stays on the field. I love that because <laughs> yeah, no he wants to look his, his, his players in the eye and he wants to be able to talk to them. We play with a ton of effort. Um, I've said this a million times when you have the kind of experience we have in our front seven, like if you really think about, yeah, we, we sprinkle in some young guys, we sprinkle in some new guys, but like, there's a lot of guys that have been around. There's a lot of guys that have been playing. They've been in the system. Like we, they're grown men. Law two is an, an all American. He's one of the best players in the entire country. He'll be a first round draft pick. And he'll probably go really high. Might even end up being a top 10 guy by the end of this all. Mm-hmm. Um, the Murphys are playing out of their mind. Mua Sow and Kim Madrano are playing great football. And that's not the only two linebackers. Cause you know, we have a ton of depth there. Tawia and Gary Smith and Keanu Williams and, um, and, and Kalusi and all, I mean, all these guys that are playing at the defensive tackle are playing great too. So our, our rush defense has been, you know, it's been absolutely off yeah. the charts. It's been so good. But then we learned against Washington State that we've got a pass defense too. And yeah, Oregon State did some things, but you know, they were on the field a lot. They weren't in the in the in, well, we, we actually ran a lot of plays, but like they just I just don't think it was as bad as is it didn't feel bad. When no, I'm watching it, I'm either. like, we're fine. Yeah. Absolutely. No, I mean they had the ball for the first ten minutes of the game pretty much, and then after that I thought it evened yeah. out and I thought they played pretty well. Speaking of that past events and, and how we saw them kind of prove themselves against Washington State, and then you know, they had a couple breakdowns against Oregon State. I think that not having Churchwell out there too was a was a was a big deal that as hurt. well. Yeah, right? That hurt. Um, I agree. Is there from your eyes or the quarterback's eyes, is there a whole lot different the way they're playing things this year, uh, other than just not having the blitz as much with more than four, you know, having to send more than four, yeah. three or four guys? Well, is that's there... that's that's the key, right? Like against Washington State, we had to we were rushing three, yeah. and we were spying Cam Ward with 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 uh, with um, Carl Jones, and then and then we we could drop people into coverage, and Cam Ward didn't know what to do. He's like, well, normally when I don't find anybody open, I can run, but I can't run because Number four sitting there staring me right in the face. And if you watch the Arizona game, they were doing the exact same thing. Yeah. And it, it, was, it was pretty funny. Um, but it was a brilliant game plan. And you can't always do that because, to be honest with you, if you're a team that can run, you're going to run against that. Oh, yeah. But UCLA is still so good up front, and those players are so good that they were able to be great against the run. Now, granted – when you play a team like Oregon State, it's not quite as easy, right? They have really good running backs. They have a really good offensive line. So I thought that's why they moved the ball a little bit better. That was a better team. Um, and, and Washington State was one-dimensional. But now we're going to play a, a, a Stanford team where I just think that, you know, we watched what they did against Colorado, which was kind of weird, right? It was 29 to nothing, and they looked like the worst team in the history of mankind. Such a bonkers game. And then they looked like, yeah, and then they could look like they couldn't be stopped. Yeah. I, I I don't I think they're probably somewhere in the the middle of those two. You know what I mean? I don't think yeah. they're that good, and I don't think they're that bad. Yeah. But um, we should we should Nick. Don't you feel like we match up really really well against them? I, I mean, I just don't know if they're going to be able to deal with our our defense. To I be feel like yeah, the same. Stanford and Colorado both are kind of the same story or different sides yep. of the same story for me. I, I think so. Yeah. Um, well, who I'm really freaked out about Wayne now is freaking Arizona because at first I was, yep. I'm always wary of a trip to Tucson, uh, where the Bruins go there. It seems like bad things happen more often than not. But this year I was like, well, you know, they have the revenge on their mind from last year. Like they'll be motivated. I mean, like they're always motivated, but they're, they'll be a little more motivated or whatever. But watching Arizona play the last three weeks, I'm like, I'm freaked out about that Tucson. I, to me, that's the most difficult game on the schedule. I know with all due respect to SC, but I just feel that way. I don't know how, how you feel. I feel that way too. Now I will, I will say this. I, I, I always, I, I'm going to admit this on a, on a UCLA show here. I know Caleb you're an Arizona guy. always okay. scares me because oh, yeah. Caleb Williams, even though he had his three interceptions, he, he's good enough to where he can carry them. No doubt. <laughs> you, know, you know, you know what I mean? So other than that though, uh, Arizona has been sneaky, good, Um, They've been getting better, and now I think they're just good. You know, you look at where they're at offensively, they're 23rd in the nation. And then guess what? They're playing defense. They're pretty good on defense. And so it's like, this is Jed Fish. We knew he was a good coach. We knew he was doing a good job in the portal and recruiting and all that stuff. He's doing a good job. He might have made a mistake for not going for two against SC. 
you know, but oh well. I mean, we yeah. saw, it's funny, we saw in the Stanford game, you know, Stanford didn't go for two and they ended up winning. So, um, you know, who knows? But I like what Arizona's do, doing, the quarterback, what's his name again, Fafita or whatever Fafita. it is. He's good. Yeah, it's weird that they, you know that like you wouldn't have expected them to bench the other guy, uh, Delora, but you know, like, they, know. they found well, something. Delora can throw for six touchdowns, but he can also throw yeah. for six interceptions. <laughs> so right. you just never know. Yeah. He just decided to have his best game against us. Yeah, no. Last time we played him, yeah, that was brutal. No, and and I but, and I totally agree with you, Wayne. In that, it to me, it when I was looking at the back half of the schedule a few weeks ago, I was like, well, they got SC, and that's the only game that really like you'd think that they'd probably be, you know, they could be uh, underdogs in. But now, I mean, I think going to Tucson, too, it might be the case as well. Yeah. But I, I'm yeah. hoping, like you, that the Bruins really take advantage of the opportunity they have in front of them with this terrific defense, with the developing offense, and, and can really finish the season strong. How do you see them finishing this the season, though? So you're asking me this question when I'm disappointed. <laughs> Because I'm, I'm like all of us. Like I, I try to, I try to, and I hate the fact that I have to be talking the way I'm talking about the quarterback position. Because, you know, I, 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 I told this story a, a bunch of times this week. But like, when, when, when I was a player, I remember, and I, I know you probably heard me tell this story before. But when I was a player, we played Cal. My, my junior year, 1993, we played Cal, and I threw an interception at the end of the game. Mm-hmm. And we had a chance to go down a win. We lost by two. And, you know, I was throw, trying to throw a skinny post to J.J. I didn't see the linebacker. I'm going to hit him right in the chest. It was just crushing. Then we played Nebraska. Back in those days, Nebraska was always fighting for a national championship, and they were really good. And we lost to them 14 to 13. And I'm sitting in meetings that that week, and and you know so I've only played two games. Yeah. And the coach says in front of the whole team, the quarterback play has not been good enough. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't that bad. I threw one pick at the end of the Nebraska game. I hit one of my receivers right in the right in the. I couldn't have thrown a better post corner, and it was dropped. And and that could have gotten us, you know, where we had a chance to go down and kick a field goal. And I didn't think I was I was that I went good, but it wasn't like I was that bad. But my coach wanted more out of me. Yeah. And he totally called me out in front of the whole team. And I'm like, I, I will always tell anybody that plays this position, if you can't handle the media, if you can't handle people saying bad stuff about you, if you can't be if you can't handle being called out in front of the whole team. If you can't handle that, you can't play quarterback. It is the most demanding position in all of sports. You have to be extremely tough, both physically and mentally. And so, you know, luckily for me, we we went on and won a ton of games after that and and got a chance to play in a Rose Bowl and ended our season with a victory over SC. But I I promise you it wasn't easy. And then here's here's the reason why I'm telling you the story. So come back next year, we start out 2-0. We're ranked really high, and everybody starts getting hurt. J.J. Stokes get hurt, a whole bunch of offensive linemen get hurt, and we're playing against Cal, right, who we hadn't lost to in like a million years, mm. and we're losing. And I'm throwing passes to where I think my receiver should be that I hadn't really worked with, and they're running curls when I'm throwing outs, and it's terrible. And at halftime, I'm sitting there going, what the heck's going on? And Coach Donahue put his arm around me. He's like, Cookie, we got to try something different. I'm like, all right, what do you want to do, coach? What do you know? No, 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 cookie. We're going to try another quarterback. Mm. I'm like, what? I'm like, are you kidding me? I'm on the Unitas award watch list. I'm on the debut. <laughs> I go, what are we talking about? And he goes, we're going to try something different. And I look back at it. I'm not going to lie. I still hate that that happened to me. Yeah. I still hate that it happened to me. And the other quarterbacks came in and did way worse. So it wasn't like I didn't get my job back, but the idea was is that he just felt like we needed to try something different. And now that I'm older, I kind of respect it. I didn't like it, but the idea is like, listen, you're just like everybody else on this team, and we got to try whatever we can try to try to figure this out so we can win a football game. And I'm like, all right. Yeah. So I still don't think it was the right decision, but I respect <laughs> that he made the decision. Well, I mean, there's no, I don't think there's any, we can't end it on a better note than Wayne giving us a nice life, life lesson. Uh, so... <laughs> Wayne, uh, that's a great, great story, and uh, always we appreciate you coming on the show. And uh, gosh, let's uh, we'll we'll see you up at Stanford. Hopefully, we'll we'll see a victory for the Bruins. Another one in Colorado. Yeah. And we'll just keep it rolling from there. But um, you know, have a good uh, trip up there uh, on the last the last weekender for maybe for a long time. Who knows, right? Hey, man, oh, I, man. it may be. And I'll tell you what, I always appreciate you guys. I always appreciate you letting me come on your show. And I hope everybody out there knows, man. I love my Bruins. I love this team. I love the character on it. And 
whether a player plays good or bad, I root for them to have the best game of their life the next week. So go Bruins and let's let's go up there and let's remember how much we hate Stanford and right. let's go beat them. That's right. All right, Wayne. Thank you very much for joining the show. All right, buddy. Good evening. Smoke them if you got them. That was the What's Bruins show. Try us tomorrow. Same bat time, same bat channel. It's got to be in and out, Mom. In or out. Well, I need the door closed. Thank you for your cooperation. Dude, Rob, we place a ball on the West Coast. The final word is boob.